but what in your opinion get, will, will get young people ticking and interested in Israel if not to just to start the conversation to get people hooked, what can I do on my campus of 80,000 students to make Israel relevant, fun, and something that they want to make time for when you have all these distractions that a college campus offers you? Great Thank question. You. Maybe the Consul General wants to answer that one. Well, you know, the, um, what makes Israel relevant, essentially, you possess the answer. Um, the biggest mistake that we made over the years is that we assumed that what will create the attraction and the relevance is, again, winning this imaginary debate. And um, it doesn't work because today, and I think that every person here who visits uh, university campuses regularly would agree with that, today the number one problem that we have on campus is not that they're anti-Israel. The number one problem that we have on campus is apathy. And uh, campuses in America are not primarily anti-Israel. If they're anything, they are probably more anti-establishment in general terms than anti-Israel. So the, the task and the goal and the challenge is to create relevance. And uh, we, again, conducted research, and we know that there are six areas that students are interested in. Number one, believe it or not, is not the Middle East. I know it's a shock to all of you, but it's not the Middle East. <clears throat> Number one is lifestyle and leisure. Number one attraction is lifestyle and leisure. Everything that has to do with the popular culture they consume, the way they dress, what they eat, the kind of music they listen to, the kind of movies they go to, and Israel has a lot to offer in that area. The second thing that we discovered is that um, a conversation about Israel as a political entity is not attractive to them. <laughs> a conversation about Israelis as human beings, that may be attractive, attractive, to, the, attractive to them. And so therefore, our task as a community is to put a human face on that political entity called Israel by bringing to campus inspirational Israelis. Now, I can't tell you what kind of Israeli would work in Florida as opposed to Arizona. Bar Rafaeli might But I can tell you that Bar Rafaeli has an appeal probably to some. Some people will be inspired by a Nobel uh, winner in chemistry. Some others will be inspired by Ohad Naharin, who is a very famous Israeli choreographer, and maybe some others at UCLA Film School will be inspired by a young Israeli filmmaker, and so on and so forth. But the point is, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with the success of the um, TED Talk conference, but the reason I think one of the reasons TED is so successful is because it's ideas expressed by human beings, by individuals, and you can actually identify an idea with a certain human being. Uh, we have hundreds, if not thousands, of inspirational Israelis that will make each and every one of us here in this room very proud to be a Jew or to be an Israeli. And we need to bring them to the forefront as a community, as a collective. I can tell you, and um, in, in the next several weeks, this will become available to the entire community to celebrate, we compiled in the foreign ministry a database of some 300 inspirational Israelis. It's called Faces of Israel. And we will make it, uh, we, we will launch it online in, in the next few weeks, and it will be available to every Jewish community to use all over the world. Brilliant. I'll tweet I that. Just, I, I do 